Hello! It was quite a long ago since I published my last movie and during this time there was quite a lot of action in the space environment. Most important events took place on June 23 as on this day we've had a geomagnetic storm which was stronger than the mega storm from March. In the difference to most of recent geomagnetic activities, it wasn't caused by a coronal host stream, but a coronal mass ejection impact. Initial wave of plasma which arrived in the evening of previous day changed drastically the orientation of IMF and BZ component fell to minus 40 nanoteslas. Such value is more than enough to cause a strong response of geomagnetic field. According to SWPC, KP index reached 8 points. Such significant events affect the geomagnetic field over the entire globe. Initial impact of the CME was recorded by most of ground magnetometers in almost every country and at higher latitudes the disturbances were extremely strong. On the Canadian magnetometer summary plot the scale grew to plus minus 900 nanoteslas. In Europe, the geomagnetic field was affected even stronger. In Scandinavia, pulses reached more than 1000 nanoteslas. Initial impact, which took place in the evening of June 22, gives me a nice opportunity to show you how a strong compression of magnetosphere affects the electron content in the ionosphere. First, take a look at both SWMF simulations of the magnetosphere. On the current ring monitors we can see nicely a strong plasma pressure squeezes the inner magnetosphere. This is rather hardcore. And now look at the NMF2 animation which is available on Swazi site. Last couple seconds are most important. But let's go back to the magnetosphere for a while as I want to show you another interesting readings which can be seen on the radiation belt monitor at 10 kilo electron volts soon before the CME impact. I was talking about the backside gas of neutral particles many times before but around 1945 UTC we can see a strange and unexpected injection of energetic plasma. But at higher energy bands, situation looks differently. Backside injection contained particles at energies lower than 1 mega electron volts. 
Instead we can see some inflows of high energy electrons entering one Allen belts at different angle. But the best happens in the morning of June 23rd. Notice the deformation of inner magnetosphere. And then around 8 UTC we can see a sudden flood of high energy electrons. It was a long time since radiation belts were so fat. I've checked how the entire event looks like in the Wiesberg application. It seems that at the time when we were hit by the strange wave of electrons, field lines generated by the software made something what I never seen here before. Four minutes before 8 UTC, condition of magnetosphere looks to be stable. Six minutes later, a huge flux tube rips through the bow shock and connects to the plasma sphere in the equatorial region. Soon after, a second vortex appears on the opposite side of the globe. That's probably the ultimate confirmation of equatorial magnetic connections, which I've explained many times before. Just look how big are those holes. Much bigger than our planet. It's a miracle! After almost two months of absence, zero ionosphere maps are back online. I have no idea what happened on those monitors during all the geomagnetic storms which took place in this period of time. But it seems that despite calm space weather conditions, there are very strong disturbances on HMF2 monitor. But now I would like to present you another nice toy which I found on the internet. It's called Ampere and shows the magnitude and orientation of global magnetic field. Data is provided by satellites. Here you can see the explanation. Vectors represent the strength and direction of local geomagnetic field. Blue and red colors show the polarities. Of course, direction of magnetic field is opposite over negative and positive polarities. But let's look at the readings recorded during the last mega storm. In the upper left corner you can see the vector which shows exactly 500 nanoteslas. Compare it with some of the vectors recorded during the initial impact. In some regions disturbances exceeded 2000 nanoteslas. Another interesting source of data can be found on RMI side. Chart on top of this plot shows the density of electrons in ionosphere. In the bottom of page you can see the explanation. During the mega storm amount of electrons was visibly reduced. 
But look what happened two days after the storm. This is rather interesting. Right now there are four tropical storms over Pacific. Fifth one can be seen in China. And now I would like to show you something what caught my attention a couple days ago. This image shows the concentration of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, measured by satellites. I think that I don't need to tell that over southern hemisphere, especially in South America, density of SO2 shouldn't be so high as we can see on this image. And while we're talking about the chemical composition of atmosphere, I would like to show you the concentration of particulate matter 10 over Europe. Of course, red color doesn't mean anything good. It is most likely the result of an extremely large dust storm in Western Africa, which took place a couple days ago. Another thing which is worth to notice is the counterclockwise spinning vortex south from Iceland, which is causing a visible outflow of dust particles. It can be seen nicely on Elmetsat Ermas images. In my humble opinion, it is caused by an open magnetospheric field line, just as other spinning Ermases visible on this animation. Some of them cause a lot of mess over the continent. And I don't say just about the weather. Those quakes form a line which is fitting nicely to the clouds formed by the central vortex. Is it one of those famous coincidences? But a lot of interesting things is taking place over the entire planet, not only over Europe. Just look at this huge flux tube which is connected to the Vanuatu region for a longer time. Ok, now it's time for my confession. I will be honest, I'm going through a serious crisis. Most of you is probably concerned about the lack of uploads. It was a very long time since I've published my last movie. Although there are a couple reasons which I could use to explain myself, the truth is much more complicated than the issues with my computer or lack of time. In the past couple years I've made quite a lot of movies and went through a long way, from an absolute ignorant to someone who can speak freely with people who spent half of their lives to learn about space physics. Those of you who followed me through all this way know for sure how big was the progress of my research. I have began in absolute darkness and without any knowledge about all the data which I am using in my movies. But then, what is the problem? I know that there is still a lot to research and discover, and I would love to go deeper to reach places where no one went before. But simply, I don't know how to do it. Some of you notice probably that I've searched the web looking for data which can be hard to find. I've used monitors which you won't see on any other YouTube channel. But it's still not enough for me. What a teacher would I be? if I wouldn't be able to teach you anything new. It was the biggest pleasure to discover and learn new things. But now I've reached the point where I can't go further without using toys for professional scientists. Simply, 
To continue my research, I need to stop being an amateur and become a pro. I've spent quite a lot of time to look for proper tool for my purpose. And I found something what would refresh my spirit and give me motivation to continue my work. I'm talking about STK, Systems Toolkit, made by AGI, together with an add-on called SEED, Space Environment and Effects Tool, they make the most powerful software available for common people. But there are a couple problems. This software is not free and it probably costs a lot of money. I don't even know how much. Besides, I would have to give them my personal data, what doesn't make me happy. I'm not even sure if AGI would allow me to use their products because of some of the aspects of my research. I have the feeling that NASA wouldn't be happy to see that someone is using such powerful toy to speak about Planet X. I've tried to obtain demo version of the seed add-on, but my discussion with the management stopped as fast as it started. Problem is that since I've took the first free dose of it, I just can't find no pleasure in using all the software which I've used for so long. This part, which was one of my biggest findings, looks like a pocket calculator compared to STK, which allows to visualize the entire magnetic field of Earth according to actual data recorded by satellites. SWMF and all the monitors of magnetosphere available on ISWA are just simulations generated using solar wind parameters recorded by ACE. STK can generate radiation belts and geomagnetic field lines according to actual measurements. The difference is so huge that I'm not sure if I would be able to continue my work using my old toys. But don't worry, not so long ago I promised you to start a new chapter of my story. Until I want to put my hands on STK, I will start to show you the greater image of reality. My history with space physics began one year before I started to record my movies, and it began with a loud boom. In 2012, I went through something what changed my life for good. I was always a person who wasn't afraid to ask difficult questions, and sometimes difficult questions have simple answers, answers which can hit you like a hammer. I've received a pack of data which is capable to change our civilization. You can call it greater knowledge. In a blink of an eye I've understood all the problems of science and understanding of the universe. Together with the understanding came the urge to share this knowledge with the rest of the world. I think that it's the right time to start doing it. My next movie will be the new beginning, so don't be surprised. Of course, I won't stop talking about space environment, as it is a part of the reality in which we exist, but it will become only a part of the whole image. Astrophysics is probably the most important branch of science, as it connects quantum physics with laws of physical realm. But reality is far beyond things which we can measure. So, prepare your minds for something great. I will try to shift the world a bit, and change the way in which we understand the universe. As for now, class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.